Okay? Better. So the main role of a team is uh, making uh, Linux and Android development for our embedded and uh, mobile products. So on, on this session, I will focus on managed flash, okay? While in the end of this agenda, uh, we will see how to get better performance. Of course, I cannot cover the whole uh, IO stack of Linux, right? So, but I, for sure, I will point you to some features we will, which uh, will make uh, your, f your, your flash, managed flash uh, work better. Okay, so in the beginning, we will uh, cover uh, uh, a real performance requirement on this embedded and mobile system. What does it mean? The gap between synthetic and user activities. The synthetic, I mean the benchmark activity. Uh, uh, the peak performance peaks during the usage case, the real usage case, and how to handle the performance peaks in flash management, okay? Um, does it affect the, the endurance on flash management device and what, what driver support is needed in order to uh, allow better performance? So managed flash is everywhere. Uh, people are moving out from, uh, from Ronend because of complicity of Ronend. The MLC chip and uh, NAND chip uh, became very complicated to, to be managed from the host side, from the Linux side, from the driver side and file system. So people are moving from uh, Ronend and file systems like JFS to, to, to work with managed NAND more and more. And you can see we managed NAND everywhere today, wearable, mobile, of course, uh, automotive, even compute. Today every Chromebook is uh, released with, uh, with managed NAND inside the MMC device. So uh, while you get your new board and you build your new board and you want to understand the real system requirement, real performance requirement, uh, how, you, how do you get those requirements? Are you measuring uh, the performance by using synthetic benchmark, like running a sequential read, getting sequential, sequential random numbers? Are you making a system analysis? Are you running the user experience? So in order to answer those questions, we were uh, raised uh, a lab, okay? In this lab, we are trying to simulate uh, real user activities, okay? Uh, while we're running, we are getting uh, uh, several uh, uh, high and mid-range uh, mobile phones with several uh, Linux and Android versions and running a real user experience, like running applications, downloading movies, uh, recording videos, like, every user uh, does. In the end, we are able to get uh, statistics, we are able to get uh, system analysis, we are making researches based on those analysis. Uh, in order to get those analysis, we were enhanced, this is a by way of standard IO stack diagram. Um, we, are, we, we have uh, uh, updated with uh, the standard tracing abilities on top of BLK trace and on top of F-trace trace points uh, on driver layers, we added enhanced capabilities in order to gather uh, process specific information. So in the end, we are able to get process related uh, uh, information like for example, we can see, you can see it here for, because of resolution, but for example, we can see what we pick, what I speak, was happened during the multi-shot, camera multi-shot. And, uh, or for example, another peak is happened when you install application. When you download application from your Google uh, Play, we can see the IOPS peak. So, comparing to synthetic benchmarks, Okay, when we record, first of all, when we record the usage case, uh, for example, we, can, we, can, we take a user, usage case uh, of uh, 24 hours, 
We are running Facebook, uh, so social networking and multimedia and all those uh, applications. Here is a duration in minutes. Yeah, over all use case. In the end, the results are very interesting, right? When uh, from the 24 hours of user activity, when the user is act user is making activity only eight hours in it per day, and phone is idle 16 hours, uh, the storage busy time is only around 15 minutes. Okay, so most of the time the storage is not active at all. The busy line is asserted only 15 minutes over 24 hours. And when, when, you, when you look on the right numbers, they are also very interesting. You can see in average user is writing, user and system and all applications are writing around 12 uh, gigabytes of data and read of uh, 74 uh, gigabytes of data. Very impressive numbers. So the, the bottom line, the main point here, what the storage time, most of the time is not busy, okay? It's an idle time, so why not using this idle time in order to, to make some background operations, for example? Okay, um, when you take a real user activity, you can see what the maximum uh, IOPS, what can be achieved during this activity is around, it was measured on some flagship mobile phone, by the way, it's around two and a half kilobyte, uh, K IOPS, okay? It's a maximum peak, but most of the time the IOPS are, are quite low. By the way, you, you also see the activity during the night time. When the device, when the system is in suspend, still some activity is running in Android system, and you can see some activities there. But again, when I go back to the previous slide, the total busy time is only 15 minutes. When you compare the real numbers to synthetic benchmarks, so the difference is huge. When you run synthetic benchmark, Android Bench, for example, you can get on MMC device, embedded MMC device, on flagship phone, you can get around 4K IOPS, random write, when on real use case you saw around one and a half K IOPS. On UFS is of course much faster, but still see the gap. By the way, when you run it on UFS and you get on synthetic 11K, still on real use case you still see around one K IOPS. It's very hard to achieve more by running real user activity. But still, some, some peaks are exists, okay? When we measure sequential write during user activity, we can see the peaks of 60 megabyte per second and even 80 and 90 megabyte per second when you play, for example, when you uh, uh, play games. Some games are require making, making a, a, a heavy activity, IO activity, so we can see some peaks here or during install application, during the download of uh, things, you can see also performance peaks. So still, uh, you can achieve those, perf those high performance peaks, but most of the time, the performance is still around 20 megabyte. But still, those peaks ha have to be handled. So flash management should take care of it and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, care was uh, performance peaks. So if for this uh, uh, peak awareness architecture is exists, okay? If you compare it to typical embedded storage without peak awareness mechanism, uh, you still, you can, usually it's, uh, uh, it's uh, MLC based devices. You can see the maximum performance bar is limiting those peaks. From time to time, peaks are needed, but performance is limited. Of course, here is also limited, but the limit is much more higher. But in peak awareness mechanism, 
uh, the SLC buffer allows to handle those peaks and achieve better performance when it requires. When most of, while most of, most of the time the performance is still low. So what is this peak awareness architecture? You have SLC buffer in the middle. As you know, SLC technology allows to achieve better performance, but you cannot actually, you, you can actually use SLC, uh, SLC NAND for entire storage device, but it's much more expensive. So having SLC buffer in the middle, several blocks, allows to, to handle those peaks where required. First copy was buffers to SLC, uh, was, the, it was peaks related data to SLC buffer, and then on idle time, copy to memory area, to main memory area. Well, it can be MLC or TLC technology. Okay, that's, that's my next slide, okay. because of course it's a right question. The buffer need to be uh, freed up, right? You need to free this buffer, copy this data to main memory area. First of all, there are several uh, smart mechanisms. First of all, uh, this technology is able to recognize those performance peaks, okay, when needed, and not always enable this SLC buffer, but only when it needed. It is able to recognize performance peaks by measuring several milliseconds of measuring performance on runtime and when enabling this buffer, okay? And on idle time, of course, idle time is needed. I just told several slides ago what most of the time the system is in idle time, right? So during this idle, buffer can be copied. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a minute, so I'm coming, no, here. no, not Linux yet, but Linux, uh, Linux uh, driver changes, no driver, driver supports is required, standard driver supports, not proprietary support or something. Because backups, background operation, during the background operation, this buffer copying is done, it's a standard storage device feature, right? Yeah. So we need to make sure what storage device driver is, supports is backups. I'll talk about this later. But of course, I'm talking about managed NAND once again. Yeah. So does it affect the endurance? Uh, many, many people can ask because endurance is very important uh, criteria for storage device, also for managed uh, storage device. So it's good for endurance. This technology is very good for endurance because first of all, data is stored in SLC buffer and as you know, probably know, the SLC buffer has much better endurance than MLC. And uh, the dat data is optimized. The folding is done. During the folding, the data can be optimized on SLC buffer. Yeah, we can pack and group the data, the pages in order to copy, to optimize for the main area uh, uh, manner. And uh, the frequently accessed data, the hot data, actually remains in SLC data, in SLC area, okay? And only cold data, recognized cold data, is copied and folded and stored in main mem me memory area. So this solution is really good for uh, endurance as well. No, SRAMs is, is different kind of buffer cache, which is exist on managed flash, also in SSDs, on the EMMC, and uh, you all, all known uh, 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 managed flash devices. So it's a different type of, uh, it's SLC, it's a different type of NAND uh, technology. So it's, it's basically a NAND buffer. Right. Okay. Yes. It depends on the vendor, but uh, in general, uh, same blocks, some vendors can use same blocks in different modes, right? Okay. 
I see you're familiar with uh, name technology a little bit, yeah. No, it's single yeah, level yeah. cell. Okay. Sing when you have only two bits per cell, a multi-level cell when you have several bits per cell, it's ah. typically it's four bit, but it can be slow higher. Slow. And TLC, it's three bit per cell. Yeah, uh, single level cells, you have one bit per cell, sorry, yeah, single yeah, level cell. We may, it's, it can be either MLC or TLC. Okay. okay. So the idea is to, uh, uh, well, in typical solution, the all data called the hot data is directly copied to the main memory area, yeah? And as you know, in end flash, the blocks are limited. The race cycle is limited, so from endurance, and also it's running some internal folding and garbage collection for the endurance. It can be worse when in case of uh, peak awareness technology, because here, first of all, all the, uh, uh, all the call data is copied to the, to the main memory area and hot data as much as possible staying on SLC buffer. But of course, the right uh, version, uh, right, uh, right question was asked before, it need to be supported and this buffer need to be copied to the main memory area. So background operation is needed, right, in order to do it. So uh, it's not always, always adjusted today. I, if you open the standard to mainline Linux uh, EMMC driver, it's not always, and also every vendor is doing its own configuration and modification of the driver. So backups is not always allowed in the system, especially in combination with power management, when system is going to idle time to suspend so typical behavior today is just stop everything, stop the backups and go sleep and send sleep command to the device. This is not good for uh, peak awareness technologies because a buffer need to be copied. The time is needed, some time is needed, a few milliseconds is still needed in order to copy the buffer. So the, the, the several, top, several issues exist, no time for background garbage collection because of immediate uh, suspend mechanism. Uh, it's entering sleep mode immediately on suspend, as I mentioned before. And as a result, user may suffer from hiccups after resume, because hiccups, I mean it will get the sustained performance, as I explained here, yeah. Can get lower performance, and those peaks will not be handled because of full buffer, SLC buffer. So another feature also is related to garbage collection is discard. Discard can be enabled or disabled. It's the implementation has already exists a long time ago. It was implemented in all storage drivers, but on block device drivers, but it, this feature can be enabled or disabled on file system level. It's a mount, mount flag. So in case vendor decides not to enable this flag, so as a result, flash management does not have free blocks for internal garbage collection and write amplification will be higher and latency, as a result, the latency will be grown significantly. So what needs to be done in order to enable a, a background <laughs> operations or peak awareness flash management? First of all, enable backups. There are two types of backups today in storage device, on EMMC at least, uh, manual and auto. In UFS, I think it's only auto backups. So we need to enable both in the driver. Need to give enough time for backups before we suspend, right? Not just immediately stop the background operation on runtime suspend, but give some time to complete its backups. 
There are some reg registers in device drivers, uh, in devices, which allows to check the backup status. So driver need first to check the backup status, if backups is still needed. And uh, enable some another feature of power of notification, but if you enable this one, this one is less required. And enable discard, as I mentioned before. By when Android, the discard is running uh, during idle time by FS3 mechanism. So today in the driver, for example, uh, the backups, as I mentioned before, the backups is stopped. This is MMC suspend routine. The backups is immediately stopped. It's just checking if MMC car doing backups. So if yes, just stop backups and go to sleep. Okay, so this solution is not so good. And on uh, initialization of a driver, the uh, suspend, auto suspend delay is set to three seconds, which is pretty much enough, but for some vendors it can be not enough. But anyway, the hard coded value for three seconds before the runtime suspend, it's not a good uh, approach, I think. So it needs to be changed. So the flow, the right flow, the recommended flow in order to support uh, backups in the right way, is just send the backups level. There is a specific register on the device which allows to check the backups level if backups is needed. And if it's needed, let's reschedule suspend for some time, for several milliseconds and check the backups again. Okay, and this way device will be able to complete its internal garbage collection before sending sleep command. So in order to resolve this, we have submitted several uh, page sets to EMMC mailing list. So you can see those patches in the mailing list, still under review. In general, those patches, we are just, as I mentioned in this diagram, uh, we are just on this flow, we just checking the backups before suspend with changes really simple. On UFS, the similar problem exists on UFS, but uh, some vendors already took care of urgent backups uh, level. There are several levels of backups uh, in storage device. So in case of urgent backups, they do a reschedule of suspend. So, on, but only on runtime suspend. On system suspend, it's still stopped. Okay, so here I wanted to demonstrate, I recorded some video in order to demonstrate how backups can affect the performance on real user activity. So for this uh, purpose, I took two uh, mobile phones. With similar, uh, oops. <coughs> with similar devices, similar mobile phones, similar system, everything. The only change, well, how do I stop it? Let me run it just from the folder and see it. You didn't see the name, right? Okay, so I took similar fonts. The only difference is, as I mentioned before, on the left side, the backups is enabled on the right and, and discard is enabled. On the right side, I have disabled everything in the driver level. And on both phones, in the beginning, I'm running synthetic benchmark just to see what, we, what in the beginning we don't see any difference. Here, is, here you can see the performance. Okay, this is a zoom out on, on this, on performance bar, on performance, on right performance number. Here is a timeline and here is a megabyte per second, okay. 
So in the beginning, I'm running a benchmark. I'm running it on one gigabyte file, 128 megabyte per file. It's, uh, it's uh, eight threads. So in total, it will write uh, one gigabyte data. In the beginning, it's preparing the file, but still, even during the file preparation, you can see performance around 100 megabyte per second. Now it's running read. It's less important for this session. And now it's running sequential write performance. You can see around 100 megabyte. Here you can, st you, you can see uh, uh, pretty much the same performance in the beginning. Still you have a buffer, so here you all already see some performance drops, right? Because probably the buffer is full on that point. I'm just running it faster. And in the end, you can see what sequential write performance on both phones. That's pretty much the same. Here you can see 100 megabyte, and here it's 92 megabyte per second. Now I'm going to run user activity. I'm uh, running, uh, downloading big applications in order to write a lot of data, allow to write a lot of iOS. Uh, taking pictures, recording the video, uh, doing some intensive user activity. By the way, you can see the performance is low as I explained before, but sometimes you can see some peaks. Here you don't see, already don't see any peaks anymore. And in the end, I'm running synthetic benchmark again to see the effect of this change on the performance. And even on file preparation, you can see the huge difference in performance, right? Here is still preparing the file. Here is already running read the uh, read the uh, synthetic read the uh, sequential read the uh, benchmark. And see the sequential write performance here. Still the same like in the beginning, and here you can see the significant drop in performance because the buffer is full, okay? If we didn't have any time to make garbage collection. <coughs> See your performance. You can see the difference, right? 20 seven megabyte per second versus 107 megabyte per second. In general, that's it. Um, any questions? No, SLC buffer, it's like, it's an end flash, right? So, yeah, the data, no, 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 the data stays, it's not like a. You don't need metadata to copy the text. No, no, all, all, it's all tables are managed on the same way, like in main memory area. So, no need to, to make, to take care of power okay. supply or something. It's like a regular NAND, just different type of blocks. It's still reliable. It's even more reliable than MLC. Okay, but. Oh, I have two questions. So, as I understand the, uh, you know, buffering, uh, you can have also the rare leveling, the main flash. <coughs> is that true? Or do you yeah, yeah. It's yeah. still the rare leveling is done on all levels, like in every uh, managed flash. The, uh, the 
error leveling is done all the time. Yeah, the backups in this case, the backups is more needed in order to copy data from the internal, from the SLC to MLC. Okay. During the backups, different kind of things can be done also, but those things can also be done during the foreground operations, which can affect the performance, by the way. So your question is correct. So where level can be done on, it's preferable to, to make it the flash management smart enough to decide if it have enough time and power of notification because in case of power of notification host uh, need to provide the signal to the device before cutting off the power so device can make uh, uh, all the internal operations much more efficiently much more faster <coughs> Yeah. You know, what if I have a device which doesn't suspend but just idles, right? Like not a mobile phone, like the industrial. So it's much more better. Yeah, so so this is like would be just a hook in the driver saying, Oh, is that like a idle mm -hmm. recognition? I need just a hook for idle recognition so time and if you want to enable a, a explicitly backups, you need to make sure what driver is doing with support what you enabling backups on during the MMC initialization routine. There is a code, the code is exist. You need to make sure what all uh, ops and all flags are configured in order to, to make sure the backups is enabled on the beginning in the initialization stage. Okay, and then I, I should detect the idle situation and I can send a start command to the backups and something. In case of auto backups, it's done automatically. So better approach, my recommendation is to use automatic backups. But in case you want to use a manual backups, driver need to check the, ma the backup status. And in case status is more than zero, it allows to perform manual backups. Mm -hmm. um, are there, there are interfaces to uh, tune the operation of the flash controller um, you know, to, to, you know, to, to notify the storage system that, that yeah, you're going to have a, a you know, no, actually, write stream? Or no, actually, the idea is to allow those applications to achieve better performance by using SLC buffer, right? So it's like an opposite. You, you, with help of SLC, if I understand the question correctly, with SLC buffer, you you allow to achieve better performance when oh, it's so required, right? SLC so SLC buffer is only, only allowing peaks. What I'm asking about is something where uh, you may have uh, continuous writes, mm -hmm. right? So you may have right. you know, 24 seven, uh, you know, kinds of, of, of writes. So on that control. case, you still will get sustained performance. By the way, it's not, it's, uh, Give me a use case, for example, when continuous write is required. Because in our, uh, I understand there are use cases, but in most of the cases, let's take, for example, the small embedded system or mobile device. The continuous write, the buffer is big enough. For example, the buffer can be 800 megabytes. It can be 2 gigabytes. So it's big enough in order to handle continuous write operations, right? Yeah, I'm, I, I guess I'm, uh, you didn't get the, the first part, like a surveillance application where maybe you've got a low resolution, you know, you've got some applications where it's a low but resolution camera, not mm -hmm. a lot of bandwidth, but continuous writes. Yeah, uh, but. And in that, that case, if you're writing to SLC mm -hmm. first and then copying, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're probably, you know, yeah, you, but you don't need the peak. Yeah, yeah. You don't need the peak, but as you mentioned, this application doesn't require the high bandwidth usually. <coughs> Even when I record with a high resolution camera, 4K video camera, I don't see significant performance peaks. I, I see some sustained performance around 20 or 40 megabytes per second, which, which is enough. Right. 
the SLC buffer can be enough for it. As I explained, I had a slide of for this. Let me. On this uh, slide, uh, you can see what even for, uh, I just put it here, 4K video, the sustained performance is usually enough. Sometimes you need some peaks, so for this you have SLC buffer, but when you're talking about long term or long uh, sequential write applications, usually bandwidth is quite. Yeah, I, yeah. I think, you know, if, if you're going to design an application like that, you kind of need to make sure that you're always below. Uh, it's No, I think. It will do that on the, uh, on the peak uh, detect detection case, right? Like if it's not peak, then it's not. Yeah. It depends on what the heuristic is. Yeah, yeah. So I, I will answer the question. The, the folding may, may be done on the foreground, so there are no some. Uh, uh, you will not see significant latency uh, hiccups because it's done on the foreground. You will see some sustained performance, yeah? But no, you will not see significant drops. You will not see some delays during the ride, okay? Users should not feel it. Uh, you will see some sustain, sustainably low performance around, I don't know, 20 or 40 megabytes a second. You will not be able to handle loss. But still, performance will be sustained, okay? No drops, no significant drops, no delays. So. Lifetime. It's all right, right? So yeah. Even if you write to it frequently, you probably has enough for. Right, but if it's being written twice, if it's, you know, gets written to SLC and then copied to PLC. Yeah. What I was really asking, uh, kind of, is there, you know, are there yeah. mechanisms for, for saying, okay, in my use case, in my embedded yeah. use case, can you, can you yeah. tune it and say just, you know. Yeah, yeah your you question know, is correct, so but. You, but the flash management is is uh, smart enough in order to do it on uh, on sustained way and not give you some performance drops. So By the way, the folding is done even without on typical uh, embedded storage, even without SLC buffer. Folding is done every time, over time, yeah, because you need to group blocks, you need to erase blocks, you need to copy data. Uh, in case of random writes, you need to make it more sequential. So the folding is done over time, and user doesn't feel it. It feel it by by overall performance, but you shouldn't see any drops. Okay? Yes. I think seventy bits on the outside it's hard to get the big picture. <coughs> Can you tell me something about what's inside nowadays uh, uh, managed storage controllers? Because there was like a teardown on the C two C conference on the OSX and there was an ARM set of PDMI and some custom hardware. What are people doing today? You don't have to tell of course, yeah. In general, what in your business is on people now embedding in uh, this kind of smart storage solutions? What are people so doing? the first uh, recommendation from my side is to gather your requirements because every vendor has a portfolio of devices, okay, which is dedicated for different use cases. We have devices with mobile requirements. We have devices with uh, automotive requirements, with connected home requirements and so on. So it all depends on program rate cycles what need to be uh, provided by the storage device. Depends on this vendor will choose for you the right NAND technology and the right flash management technology. Okay, so typically people are gathering all requirements and coming to st storage vendor and, tr and trying to get the right product specifically aligned to their needs. Okay. Does it answer this question? I was more thinking like, okay, uh, in a typical EMMC controller in a contemporary mobile right. phone, what's in it? Is there a Cortex core or something that's managed in it? Is there some so hardware? Is there EMA controllers? What's in it? Uh, it's a good question. I think I cannot uh, cover this question. First of all, it's, it's, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke, yeah. So uh, I don't know. I don't know, really. Every every competitor has its own technology, so I can only guess, okay, based on every competitor has its own, you know, competitor lab, yeah. which is discovering competitor devices, I guess, <laughs> by, by the joke. But uh, I think it's pretty much with same, but all you, everyone use, uses different flash technology. Almost everyone is using some vendors using TLC, some vendors using MLC. They have X, X kilobyte uh, 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 buffer, internal cache buffer. Some of them ha have some more, uh, more uh, buffer and more powerful controller. But if you take uh, uh, a look on comparison, performance comparison between competitors, you will see pretty much the same numbers, right? So I believe we all use same uh, same uh, principles. But, uh, yes. Okay. I disabled uh, both auto backups, manual backups, and also discard as a mount point of, as a mount flag of uh, of XT4 file system. Backups. Backups is much critical. Discard is more critical for a long run, a long term run. When you have uh, f enough free blocks, you will not feel any difference. When one, but wha once your media became full and fragmented, in that case, discard became critical and you will see some performance degradation. But on the short term, for several few uh, gigabytes of data, the backups is most critical part. Okay? So at the end, um, you had an impressive game on, on sequence tool, right? Uh, the game on, on random rise was not so good. So right. Um, I would, so two questions. I would expect that this is more happening in the standard user use case with more random rise happening, but the first question is my assumption too about this So, first of all, backups is also good for random writes. For random writes, it's uh, more pro problematic from, uh, first of all, random writes are more, uh, most of the activity, IO activity is random yeah. on real use case. Yeah. All SQLite uh, activities, almost every application today running some database or running some random yeah. activity, right? Yeah. And when your media became uh, fragmented, you you have more random, even more random. But for random, you don't really need the uh, peaks. You need more sequ more sustained performance for random. It's really hard when I, 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 I'm looking on this slide. It's four megabytes for second. Usually this performance is enough even on sustain without having SLC buffer in the middle. Yeah, all, all performance. Not going to generate, uh, of course. To, to have, have a peak, certainly not a full second. Of course. Basis. No, no. Uh, first of all, all those results here and here are based on our traces, which are measuring latency for per IO. Okay. So everything is measured based on latency per IO from the beginning of operation driver layer just before issuing request and, com and on completion request. We're measuring two points. Before issuing request and on completion of request. Okay, but all these results are in, in uh, the but device. And then we are translating those results to megabyte on IOPS, okay, but based on latency. 
everything is based on latency. So in case you have huge latency, of course, you will see an effect on performance. So, so we didn't see any latencies uh, of seconds or even more than 100. Typical, the maximum allowed latency typically is 100, uh, it's 250 <coughs> milliseconds per IO. But we didn't see such huge numbers. Okay. Usually it's about four milliseconds in maximum. On which uh, on which architecture? On this architecture. Okay. And later in peaks, you know, no, no. Only in peaks, the data is written to 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 SLC buffer. Mm. On regular case, it's written directly to 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 main memory. The power management mm -hmm. question is right, but uh, as I mentioned before, I'll just show you a slide with a total busy time, which is really, really small, right? And for garbage collection, you need a few more milliseconds. And taking in account all power consumption of all your devices on the board, the storage devices doesn't really requires many power, right? So it needs more power, but not significantly. So I don't have any numbers here to show you, unfortunately, but you can email me, I can, I can handle it. For a big rights, what do you mean this so, scam? So, so or let me rephrase. Is, is the metadata everywhere? The metadata, the internal metadata of a device of flash management? Yes. You mean? It depends on architecture, okay? It can be maintained on SLC blocks and can can be maintained on MLC, it depends. It can be maintained but by So it's the data is going directly to to the main area, okay? So the metadata is usually maintained uh, without any uh, any dependency. You know, it's it's maintained externally. It's maintained independently. No. <laughs> no, it, it's really, no, no, I know it's maybe funny, but it really depends on flash management uh, algorithm on FTL. And you shouldn't feel, you can make an experiment, right? You can run uh, data, you can measure performance and, and drop some uh, data to allow this mechanism, to trigger this mechanism, and then measure the latency in between. But of course you will see what the latency here is lower because SLC performance is faster, right? It's better, so the latency will be lower. So it doesn't really depend on internal metadata maintenance, right? It's more depends on flash blocks performance, the actual raw performance of flash technology. And in <coughs> case of SLC, the performance is lower. It's, it's faster, so the latency is lower. So. Any more questions? Oh, yes, please. So in general, uh, you, you talk also about the better cooperation between the storage device and the business level. Right. Right. 
Right. If you if you did it work did it work in this area as well? Yeah, sure. First of all, there is a feature in the spec on EMMC spec which allows to read the device health. Okay? Which can tell you the health state of a device, how many percents of a program array cycles that's or they're already done. And some vendors e even require more. So uh, Yes, this feature exists. If you want, you can email me or you can come after a session. We can open the spec and find this specific uh, reg register in the device, which allows to read the device health information. But do you find the EMMC standard is well, good enough to do a monitoring of a EMMC device over a longer run time or lifetime, like five to 10 years or whatsoever? Is it enough to? Okay, so it depends on the technology. If you choose, uh, when, you, when you choose your product, you see the spec, the data sheet of this product, you can see the max allowed program error cycle. And you, as I mentioned before, you need to know approximately what is your system requirements, how many megabyte per day you are going to write. So based on this, you will be able to understand if this specific product is good enough for your needs. But there are, as I mentioned before also, there are several technologies. You can choose uh, the product which has much more uh, program array cycle, cycles and which will be probably more costly but will allow to achieve more, much more program array cycles. Uh, I don't think this feature is, is exist on MMC or SD cards. On, on MMC or SD cards, not yet. I know, as far as I know, there is a work done on, on, on SD standard in order to allow garbage collection all, always, also there. But it still not exists in the market. So it's only for embedded for now. No, you c if you have an ability to add capacitors to the system or just uh, solder your battery in, <laughs> it's better. But uh, when you, again, looking at data sheet, usually most of the vendors of good, of, of, uh, good known vendors are promise you uh, allow, uh, are power, power reliable, bottom line. Yeah. <coughs> so you can drop the power and worst case you will lose, lose your cache data, data cached in the, the internal cache of a device if you didn't issue flash operation before. <laughs> or you can lose your last write operation which was running on the same time, programming on the same time. But it's reliable. You shouldn't lose the previously programmed blocks or pages. Again, I'm talking about non-products like not about uh, low cost or something. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay.